This is the third of three videos of showing the various basic features of BrainSight for TMS. If you recall from the first video, we uh, performed all the pre-TMS session steps um, to get ready for a TMS session. So loading MRI, performing 3D reconstruction, picking your landmarks for um, core registration as well as your targets. The second video showed um, how you can then use BrainSight in the TMS session to correctly place the TMS coil over your desired location and at the same time during your TMS session record various bits of information every time the TMS coil is fired. For example, BrainSight could be talking to a neuropax EEG and acquire EEG information um, related to the TMS pulse. We can also record EMG using our built-in two-channel EMG device and after the fact that EMG information could be used to create some very basic motor mapping which uh, I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, so now in fact we'll, we'll load up the project. So um, this project file will not be the same project as the TMS session since the TMS video uh, we didn't have the EMG device available at, the, at that time. So I will load um, a previously created uh, TMS project where we performed multiple TMS sessions. So I'll simply select open recent project and so in fact now if we look here we've done all the same things that we did in the previous project where I created some 3D reconstructions, um, created some landmarks for the registration, some targets for um, stimulation including a large grid over my motor area and if we look at the sessions in fact we've created many TMS sessions right so if I go back to in fact I can go to any session here and click resume and pick up where we left off had we been interrupted for some reason. Um, in general though at this stage we're in the review stage so instead of creating a new session I will simply click on the review button and this brings up a window that's pretty similar to the TMS performing session um, except for showing more uh, information on the left side. Um, now if you had a larger screen then the three-dimensional reconstructions and the, the images themselves would look a lot, uh, you'd have a lot more um, space to see that uh, but I'm recording this off my laptop at the moment so um, this is essentially a small, the smallest screen that you would you would be using. So let me just zoom out a little bit here. Again, we can change the layout to whatever, however we want to see our, our data. Let me just go back to a two by two for now. So we have our our curvilinear brain. Now we had a, a different type of grid that we used to stimulate. Um, but let me just turn in fact that off. So now in fact we can simply show whatever information we want to look at from any session. So I can select this session for example and we can display all the data we've acquired. I can also select another session. So in fact you can pool data from multiple TMS sessions into this one window. Okay. But I'll just focus on the last session that we performed. So here we have a bunch of samples. I can click on one of them and say go to and we can see exactly where the TMS coil was. Now let me show that with some uh, orientation information. So here's the inline and inline 90 and maybe you want to show a scalp just for reference here. Right? So you can see here all the positions where we've acquired some data. Right? Now I can also instead select for example EMG since in fact during this session we acquired EMG information. So here's our EMG display window. Now I can simply, let me just rifle through some of these samples here, right? For example, we have a decent spike. Now I can use the zoom controls here or option scroll. So I can zoom up on this, I can change the X and the Y zoom quite easily. Now if I shift click to select multiple um, samples, we will show all the samples here and in the dotted line, you may have seen the video, we show the average of all these samples. So the, the, the idea here is that we can make sure that the data makes sense, that we, you know, we don't have any bad samples, and I can change this window right, to make sure that the EMG or for the NEP values that we're actually looking between uh, reasonable start and finishes. Now, let's look at a few of these here. 
some of these look okay. Let me zoom out here. Some of these are quite big pulses. So here's a typical one. Now we have a bit of artifact here. It's actually kind of rare in our system. I think that maybe, um, if I think back to that session, I was probably pretty sweaty and, and didn't have the electrodes well placed. And when the electrodes aren't well applied, of course, that will have an impact on the signal quality. Okay. Well, these look pretty decent. Now, we can look at them individually, but we can also use this to create some information. So let me, if you look at this, this area here, we can click on configure columns and decide what we want to see in this little list, right? So the sample number, the sample name, of course, the date, the time, the associated target. So we know where we were. We also know where we meant to be. So we know the error. We know how far off we were. I can also have the peak to peaks of the MEP values themselves. Now I can easily see what the MEP value was and I can go looking for, there we go, I can set these, right? So I can study this data. Now we can also bring up this inspector and if I go to that session, it's like channel the pod one, which is where, well, what we were recording off of my, uh, my hand. And I can choose now to either color the sample or not color the sample. So we can create a color lookup table based on the relative MEP values, right? I can change the lookup table. Now let me click on something called update selected map. So what we're doing is we're taking all these EMG data, right? And we're now mapping it back to the volume. So much like a functional overlay. So the, the way we do this is if you think of every sample that we've acquired, there's an orientation to the coil. If we were to project that orientation into the cortex and give all the voxels that intersect that, the value that's associated with the EMG, then we can create an EMG map. And if we interpolate between all these samples, we can create this interpolated map. Now, if I just look at the, to the threshold a little bit here, we can easily get this to display this map, right? So in fact, let me just turn off the actual samples here, just to make it easier to see. So what we did is we, we gave, in fact, each sample a full width half max, so a, a physical width as it were. And we projected those numbers into the volume, and then we interpolated between all of these nodes. So between each grid node where we acquired an EMG value, we interpolated between all the neighbors, right? And that enables us to draw this map. So now we can easily see where the EMG was higher. And as I click, in fact, on this view, we show the EMG value here. Right? So it gives you a very visual representation of the EMG data we acquired. So when you perform an EMG over a grid, we can draw this, this EMG map onto the three-dimensional cortex. Right? So now this allows you to very easily associate the EMG information with the underlying cortex that we were stimulating. So that's a basic way of looking at your data. Now, of course, we've acquired all this information. So here, whenever I select one of these samples, we show all this information that we've acquired. So the distance to the target, the error off our target. We can change the visual representation of the data so you can tailor that screen to, to however it is you want to see it to properly interpret your information. We can change the color if we're not doing the online mapping. We can change it from a trajectory to a marker. We can change the shape just for visual representation. Now, we can also export this information. So, it's, you know, it's nice to have it within BrainSight and you can use it to visualize things, but you may want to do your own analysis. So you click on export and we bring up an export sheet. You can give it a name, right? Now, this will create a tab delimited file format, right? Now, there are three sections into this file. One, all your samples. Second section, your targets. And the third section, the actual landmarks used for core registration. So let's look at the samples more carefully. We can choose to export all the samples, or we could have selected a subset of the samples in the list and, and asked it to select, to export only those selected samples, or for some reason we can export no samples. We can also decide what we want to export in that file associated with each sample. So we always include the sample index, so first, second, third sample, the order in which they were acquired, the name of the sample, which of course you can change at any time, just by 
changing the name in this list. You can also, we also export the session name, so which TMS session that created the sample, and the XYZ position of the TMS coil. We can also export, selectively, the direction cosine, so the three vectors of the TMS coil. Right? So if you look at the coil, we can think of the X going from the middle, the hotspot to the right, Y from the hotspot forward, and Z from the hotspot up. So in fact, the Z vector gives you the orientation information. We can also export the name of the associated target, the timestamp, so the exact time that that sample was created, who was driving the system. So if you have more than one coil that's being tracked, then we know which coil was the one that was recorded. You can type in a comment during the TMS session and export that. You can also, um, if you have the Maxim 200 or the Bison connected, we can export the stimulator power, as well as the EMG peak to peak. And if you also choose the EMG waveform, so the actual waveform data can be exported as, as one of the items in the text file. So you could then, in some other program, MATLAB, for example, load all the EMG waveforms and do some sort of post-processing. In fact, if you can re-export your, your, your process data in the same file format, you can re-import that in BrainSight as a synthetic session. So then you can, you can side by side, or overlay, show your raw data and, and any process data at the same time. So you can use that for, for different types of visualization. We can also export the targets, and we can export the landmarks. And I'll just uh, quickly look for an example of that. Let me just open up the sample data folder just a moment. So if I bring this folder here. So this is a quick example of, of the file. So there's always a, at the beginning a brief explanation of the, the data that was exported. And in each one, each piece of information has a tab between them, so the name, right, index number, associated target, X, Y, Z, direction, cosines, and then this pile of information over here is the waveform. So in fact, the waveform being one piece of information, each sample is um, separated by a semicolon. So each field is separated by a tab, and each field with multiple entries, each entry is separated by um, a semicolon. And that's essentially it. So this is the our tools to review uh, a brain tech session. Thank you.